Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. We're here in the main menu because there's kind of a lot to unpack after last time. We discovered that Mr. Scratch, the entity we'd been calling Mr. Scratch, well, just straight up doesn't appear to be the same entity we faced in American Nightmare at all. I guess that guy really did die in 2012. And this new entity is, uh, the real Alan possessed by the darkness directly. Although I did find myself wondering, what if that's what Mr. Scratch always was? What if the moment Alan re uh, arrived in the dark place, the dark presence was able to just use the fucky nature of time there, reach into the future, and pluck Alan from the timeline after he'd been ground down and possessed. Oh boy. I shouted to Elthwar, who said, While I wasn't expecting that to be the origin of Mr. Scratch, plot-wise it is a very good representation of someone's inner demons taking control. That slowdown of the music also made it feel like the point of the loops was to grind down Alan until such a feat was possible, but I can't help but feel like there are still a few ways for the loops to resolve since Saga still has a chance to meet Wake slash Scratch once more. Um... Man alive. And, you know, it finally occurred to me that the only thing that was different between the first loop where Alan got, you know, the dark presence boring, boring into his head at the end and then he just woke up in the studio again and that last loop where he actually turned into Mr. Scratch the only difference is that that's the moment that Saga's summoning pulled him out of that's it I feel like all the loops ended that way, that it just did that over and over and over so yeah, grinding him down. I feel like even that loop, if Saga hadn't intervened, probably would have ended with Alan being reset somewhere else. And if he was too broken by that point to, you know, keep going, by all means, let's just erase him again. But then things got really weird when we fought Mr. Scratch, uh, who was purged from the body of Alan, but then possessed the body of Alex Casey, Saga got tossed into the dark place, and now Alan has voluntarily gone there himself, hunting Mr. Scratch in the hopes that if he gets the clicker before the apocalypse is done, he can still rewrite this. Then we went through the portal and everything was fine on the other side, and it was a bright sunny day showing Deerfest. So, yeah, I have no idea what the fuck is going on. But we're about to find out. I brought Saga Anderson into the store. Worried to help me escape. She succeeded. It cost her everything. I'd used Alex Casey in my writing for years. The real Casey had been drawn here because of that. Now he was a victim too. Saga, Casey, Alice, all this horror originates from me. It's my fault. Scratch had to be stopped. I've driven down this road before. Been driving on it forever. It loops forever. Hey, look at that. I was some all along. Place here. This would take me back inside. Fuck it, I'm gonna let it play. This is really dramatic. In 2010, I dived in. A leap of faith for Alice. With no idea that the cost would be a nightmare worse than death. Taken me 13 years to get out. Now Alice was dead because of me. And I was going to make that leap again, this time knowing the cost all too well. Another way to look at it? I had brought the dark place here with me. I never had gotten out. Maybe after this I finally could. It was a fool's hope. I had no choice. I had to do it. That didn't make me any less terrified. Well, oh, fuck it. You accidentally became the devil. 
Maybe sacrificing yourself for our sins will help you balance that out. Expected. I feel like I, w I really want to mention something. That I'm actually kind of annoyed at myself because I totally wondered about possession before we found out the truth about Mr. Scratch. Because, well, I'm specifically thinking about the sequence where the cult attacked the, the lodge, where he was running around in the woods shooting cultists with a shotgun. You know, there was this cutscene there where he suddenly gets jump-scared by Mr. Scratch, like, three times in a row. He grabs at his head like he's in agonizing pain, and he yells, HE'S GETTING CLOSER! HE'S ALMOST HERE! And it's like, is he talking about someone taking him over? And, you know, then there was, uh, Ilmo in the prison cell saying, HE'S GOT A MONSTER INSIDE HIM! YOU NEED TO KILL HIM! But, uh... The one that stuck out the most to me was listening to Dark, Twisted, and Cruel again, where one of the lines is literally, When the writer is in doubt, then it's my turn to come out. And the very last line of the song repeats that idea. When the writer is in doubt, I just scratch out. Fuck! They'd been telling me the whole time, and I didn't even fucking notice. <laughs> Sorry about that. Needed a moment to check on something. Uh, I wanted to give a shout-out to Torek00, who says of the Ilmo we saw in the story surrounding the theater. I'm very curious if the Ilmo presented here is what the story was trying and failing to turn the real world's Ilmo into. That's a terrifying thought. Actually turn him into a murderer who callously took out his own brother. Well, we got a fucking world to save. Wake deftly tricks the reader into believing the cult of the tree is the story's antagonist. Uh, happy Deerfest. On any other day, I would assume the person putting a deer skull with the antlers on on their uh, truck hood, uh, truck grill rather, was insane. Even Texans don't put the fucking skull there when they put the bullhorns on their cars. This motherfucker is a home run. Return has readers on the edge of their seats. It's the diner. Can I go in? Oh, I don't like the way some of the people are just watching me. And they're all wearing deer masks, incidentally, Justin. Every single one of them except me. Oh, no. Hello, I'm Ilma Koskela, and welcome to the Koskela Brothers Book Club. This week, we will review the highly anticipated... He's also wearing a mask. Alan Wick, Return. Return is printed on a firm, high-quality, white offset, uncoated paper stock, huh. making every page a true delight to turn in your fingers. <laughs> nice. Alan Wick's brilliance is on full display with his choice of a hardcover book jacket made of a premium enamel stock with gloss lamination that is both tasteful and pleasant to the touch. Isn't that right? Oh. It just cuts to no one. Wake set a high standard with his previous novel, but I can say without hesitation that Return contains the best and most compelling book description on a back cover that I have ever read. This book blurb <laughs> is truly riveting and will keep you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. It is accompanied by a tasteful photograph of Alan Wake's home here in Bright Falls. 
The book weighs one pound and three ounces. Return is a true masterpiece. Get a copy of Return, goal added. I'll give it a perfect score of five Alma beers out of five. How about you? Ah, oh, he keeps looking over to no one. I think there was actually an outline of a person there. There you have it. Alan Wake has done it again. This was the Costco Brothers Book Club. Cheers. That voice, is he taken? Oh, I guess everyone was taken. Oh no. Man, that was just sad. The Costco Brothers achievement unlocked. Let me guess. Watch all Coskella Brothers commercials. Oh, man, I, I... Oh. Oh, and for the record, uh, the trail of the writer is watch all the writer's journey videos. His way out was complete chapter gone. Filled with rage was defeat scratch. Uh, rock and roll baby was complete chapter summoning. I would have preferred, uh, that I'd missed one where they were still happy and cheery together. Although I did honestly think it was about to cut to Yako's corpse, so uh, I guess one better. Hey, for once the dark place went less horrifying than I was expecting. That's a start! <laughs> oh, I guess their mouths are technically exposed, but that guy does look like he's dunking the end of the nose of his mask into the coffee every time he holds up the mug. Oh, I'm glad I looked in here then. Oh, well, we got that unfinished business taken care of. I needed to get a copy of Return. I needed to read the ending to have a shot at changing it. I did find it interesting that Ilmo clearly hadn't read the book. Scratch's ending. A perverse version of reality. The townspeople brainwashed. Everyone and everything revolved around Return. As if it had just been published. Yeah, there, there, there's banners everywhere. Like... The ones in the middle of the street have been replaced with Alan Wake Return. Oh no, some of them are still Deerfest. 81st Annual. Uh... Oh, it's a... I've just realized this float is a sauna. <laughs> On the back of a float. That's what the bucket is for. <laughs> Suomi Hall, discover your heritage, located at 32 Pleasant Drive. Oh, it's the old people. And Norman can walk again and has pants. Oh no. A spell by the Tourna Forest. Jeez. She really liked it. Because she had to. I thought the guy in the blue jumpsuit was OT for a second there, and that would really be better. See, I expected the Coscolas to become taken because of their similarities to the Hotari brothers. <laughs> oh, now the writers are just patting themselves in the back. <laughs> kind of hang out here next to the old people and see what they think of the book. Drink Ama, the Finnish style lager. go down as literature's best law enforcement duo. <laughs> the salt chamber story had me rolling on the floor. <laughs> Is this Mini May? Or, uh, Mandy, Mandy May? No, no, that's, uh, that's the exercise woman. I can't remember her name. Coffee people! Oh, they're not saying anything. I wonder if they're wearing deer masks under there. I mean, probably. Probably. The tragedy of Saga losing her family is a blatant commentary on a woman's struggle to balance her personal and professional lives. I'm kind of tempted to just lean into the author thing and like, yes, thank you! I wondered if anyone would get that. Mother had to put up with that. The old gods of Asgard. 
guard are back. What? Wake clearly knows what his fans want to see. Here's one of the other guys in a towel. I don't think it's Norman, though. Just, you know, just talk to Norman. The gut-wrenching ending in which Saga is left to die in the lake is oh. modern horror at its finest! No! Oh, right. Yeah, this is Scratch's ending. Setting the trilogy's exciting conclusion at Deerfest. Oh, Link's return. A genre bending mixture of fact and fiction. This is fucked up. Oh, there's the Palace Lodge. I didn't understand what was going on half the time, but I loved every word of it. Oh, and there's the Huatari float. Great. <laughs> the stage might seem departure is one upped by the absolutely mind frying dark ocean summoning well played departure being alan wake one of course so they're talking about the actually i had a comment specifically about that didn't i Sorry, it took me a moment to locate it. Here's Torek00 on the subject of the Dark Ocean summoning fight. Shout out! One thing strikes me about this combat sequence. The sense of support. For the first time in the entire game, you don't have to look over your shoulder, you don't have to ration your ammo, and you don't have to micromanage which Taken you've blasted your flashlight at, and it's because you've got friendly allies constantly giving you chatter, gear, and light. This was a great subversion of the survival horror genre the game has been stubbornly living in up to this point. Oh, and since it doesn't really, uh... Since it's a short one, shout out to Fay Otter, who says, The spiral! It gets tighter or it gets looser, depending on your perspective. Freedom could be just around the bend. I like that positivity. We're gonna need that in a minute. I have a very strong feeling. Okay, anything else in the peanut gallery? Marcy's here. Such a people gathered in front of a float. Is that Ilmo? It is Ilmo, but he's just standing there. Oh, everyone's looking at me now. It's mildly unsettling. Oh, it's not locked in front of this lady's camera. Oh, god damn it. There's a cardboard cutout of modern... I'm going to do this. There's a cardboard cutout of modern Alan here. Alan Wake, the much-anticipated sequel to Departure and Initiation. Return. What, I can take this copy of the book? The cardboard copy in his hand? Uh, fuck it, what am I... Why am I questioning this? It's the dark place. Oh, yeah, it's real. Look at that. I could see the round windows of the writer's room in the photo. That's where I had to go. To rewrite the ending of Return. Oh god. Six Shit. The whole crowd's angry at me. Oh shit! And running! And barricading the door with an old axe? Write my ending to return. I had to get to the writer's room to stop this horror story. For the love of God, read the last chapter, man. This was an obsessive, egocentric nightmare, all revolving around a vain monster of a writer and his final divine work of art. The novel return come true. It wouldn't stop here. It would keep spreading. Oh my god. It's the writer's room windows. They're in the Valhalla nursing home. How the hell didn't I notice that? Get to the writer's room in the I manor house attic. I needed to reach the writer's room. 
write a new conclusion. Was Scratch's insecure need for fame, for praise, drawn from my psyche? I would bring his sick fantasy crashing down around him. He was... I mean, the original for Scratch was really, really fond of himself. Yeah, maybe the... Or I mean, I was thinking, you know, maybe the origin was he got pulled back in time to the point where Alan arrived so that he could harass him from the very beginning, but... Well... Number one, it doesn't explain how he was able to leave the Dark Place way before that happened at this point. Like, you know, he was all eloquent and murdery and uh, making jokes and shit in American Nightmare. He's just a, ra a, you know, a frothing monster here, as if it's really early in his development, you know? Except... Except that when he showed up in Alan Wake 1, he looked exactly like Alan did there, not, you know, like this. On a side note, apropos of nothing, I really, really liked it when I closed those gates there behind me. Alan swapped the flashlight to his right hand before reaching out with his left to close the gate. I've never seen a video game take the time to do that before. And then, you know, swap back to his left before he left, Justin. Oh god, if ot has got a mask on, nothing can save us. Unless he trusted us to save him. Oh, on a side note, it did also occur to me at some point that, uh... That the Tor and Odin who were playing the music during, uh... Herald of Darkness were the real Tor and Odin. They were just doing something before they actually arrived, because, again, time is fucky. But more importantly than that... They also looked like they were about 30, and I guess that's also because time is fucky? Okay! I had to find another way inside. Yeah, okay. Scratch did not like that. Even if he isn't in here anymore. Oh god, all those jump scares when I was playing as Alan were coming from inside the house! I'm really glad Saga- Oh! can't actually open this gate. I was gonna say I was glad Saga cut off the, uh, the bolt cutter lock, but it's not the way in. Okay, the basement doesn't actually lead back to the house. I remember that. Uh, there was another gate over here, and if that doesn't work... Well, the basement door is closed anyway. If that doesn't work, I'll have to go through the wellness center. That door is open. Great, yes. Let's let's go through the wellness center. We had such happy memories there. Alice. Alice. What was that? It was Alice like Alice was dead. Was this a trap, or was Scratch torturing me? If she, it looked like she dropped from a cliff in sight of the lake, if she actually fell in, it's possible she went to the dark place instead of dying. Actually, I had that thought about Logan a while back. I was kind of expecting Alan's story to reach a point where it seemed like he was going to give up, and then Logan Anderson would appear out of nowhere to force him to keep going, because she can ignore the story too. Like, that's why he wrote her into the dark place. Well, this worked. But yeah, it was like an echo scene of just Al Alice's live-action face hovering over the doorway to this place. Oh, yeah, yeah. This feels like the dark place now. Nothing is different. It just feels off. Oh, it's just a, a stack of green trays here next to the cafeteria thing, not the uh, first aid kit I thought it was. Alice. Alice. No. Oh, everything is swimming. Oh, right, yeah. Dark place. Again. Oh, I hate it when it gets so pronounced that even Alan himself is blurry. Kind of reminds me of Scratch. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. I'm Burning Dog Face, and, uh... 
this insane journey into the night must keep going until we reach the conclusion, no matter how unfortunate or horrible it is. Wish me luck, Burning Dog fans. Give me the strength to keep going all the way to the end. No matter what it costs. I'm sure Alan would demand nothing less. Go for it, says my lozenge wrapper, and be unstoppable. So, I'll see you next time on Let's Play Alan Wake 2. Take care of yourselves. Uh, actually read books you're designed to review, and... Stay in the light. <laughs>